Here's one kind of miracle I do believe in. It's a miracle 9 inch black and white Super VGA computer monitor. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. Very long time viewers may remember this as the monitor I used back in 2009 with an IBM ThinkPad laptop that I referred to as a half top because it had a faulty LCD screen which I removed leaving only the base of the laptop. And I haven't really used this monitor for anything since then. So I thought I'd take it out of storage and see if it still works and try to give a better example of what its image quality is like. Its styling is reminiscent of Apple's computer monitors from the 80s and 90s during their Snow White design language era. But this monitor was designed to be used with PCs because it has a VGA connector rather than the larger Macintosh video connector. And it's missing pin 9 so it can be used with older computers and video cards. It's kind of hard to see because it's under this ledge here but on the front there's the power button which is a physical power switch and controls for brightness and contrast. And on the back there are two more controls for vertical height and horizontal centering. The video cable is permanently attached and it has a standard IEC socket for the power and it's universal voltage and frequency from 100 to 240 volts AC at 50 or 60 Hertz. And in case you're wondering, it weighs about 8 pounds or about 3.7 kilograms. So you might think this monitor is from the late 80s or sometime in the 90s, but as you can see, it's newer than that. It's from May 2002. It's the Miracle M0935 9-inch SVGA monochrome monitor. And I like how it actually lists the visible image size of 8.85 inches. You don't normally see that on a CRT monitor. And there's the FCC ID of KVCKS dash M0935. I looked that up and the manufacturer is Kasai Electronics Company Limited in Shenzhen, China. The FCC application was granted in 1996 and it lists a resolution of 1024 by 768 interlaced. And in the early 2000s, these 9 inch black and white computer monitors were still in widespread use by point of sale terminals, otherwise known as cash registers. It wasn't until a couple years after that that LCD panels had really taken over the industry. Back in the 1980s, these black Black and white CRTs were much more commonly used with computers because they could be very economically produced because they used the same CRT design as portable black and white televisions. Black and white picture tubes had all been pretty much standardized to use all the same voltage requirements and pinouts. That allowed this Super VGA monitor to use the same picture tube design as a Macintosh Classic and as an ordinary portable black and white television. They might just have slight differences in their mounting hardware and I can also tell that the two computer monitors have more of an anti-glare coating than the TV. These days people like to use these small computer monitors together with a small form factor PC and a matching small keyboard. That way the size of the entire system stays proportional and it ends up just looking like a regular PC that has been shrunken down in size. But first I'm going to use it with my IBM PS2 because this XGA2 card provides support for a wide variety of resolutions and refresh rates including interlaced modes so we can get a better idea of the exact capabilities of this monitor. Also many newer computers were not designed to support a monochrome VGA monitor and that may result in some of the colors not being visible. Whereas an old PS2 like this was specifically designed to support black and white monitors so therefore we should get a true monochrome image of all the colors. I've got the PS2 booted up to a DOS prompt and I have a program called CGA Cal which displays color bars on the screen so we can test if it's displaying all of the colors as shades of gray or if some of them are missing. This is not real CGA hardware so I'll tell it no. It's kind of hard to see on camera because the brightness of the monitor is swamping out the image sensor, but it is definitely displaying all 16 colors as shades of gray. Here I've increased the exposure of the camera 
So now you can definitely see that the blue and red are showing up as shades of gray. So if you've got a monochrome VGA monitor and you're not seeing all of the colors displayed as shades of gray, then either your video card is not configured properly or it's simply not properly designed to work with a monochrome monitor. Now I'm in Windows at a standard VGA resolution and frame rate, but I want to go into the XGA control panel here and see which higher resolutions this monitor supports because it claims to be Super VGA. So I'm going to try 800 by 600 at 60 Hertz non-interlaced. And restart Windows and we'll see if that works. Here is 800 by 600 at 60 Hertz and it looks fine. Obviously you're going to need to sit up close to be able to read the text, but if you do, the image is sharp and clear. Here is 800 by 600 at the next highest refresh rate of 72 Hz and obviously we're not getting a viewable image. So the maximum usable refresh rate at 800 by 600 is 60 Hz. Now the FCC ID specifically said it is interlaced at 1024 by 768 so that's what I'm going to use. 43.6 Hz interlaced. Now we're at 1024 by 768 interlaced. And that flickering you may or may not be able to see on camera is not visible in real life. In fact, it actually looks less flickery than the 60 Hz non-interlaced refresh rate we were using previously. The only effect I can see of the interlacing is that very thin horizontal lines have a very slight shimmering to them. I zoomed in and slowed down the camera shutter speed so you can get a better idea of this monitor's image quality at 1024 by 768 resolution. And keep in mind that what you're seeing on the screen now is about 3 inches across in real life on this CRT. I tried setting it to 60 Hz non-interlaced at 1024 by 768 and just as I suspected we just get a mess on the screen. It, it definitely is exceeding the capabilities of the monitor. And there is no power saving mode on this monitor. It has instant response as soon as the computer displays video signal you're going to see it. That way the BIOS messages, which often get missed by newer monitors, which take a couple seconds to initialize, are visible. I now have it connected to my Great Wall U310 keyboard PC running Windows XP at 800 by 600 at 60 Hz, and this is a very nice image. Unfortunately, like most newer computers, and I mean newer as in pretty much anything from the late 1990s onward, this computer does not support interlaced mode. So 800 by 600 at 60 Hz is the best we're going to get out of it. And here's a brief sample of some video playing on the monitor. This is the epitome of laziness. This coffee maker is insane. Introducing the new voice activated coffee maker from Hamilton Beach. To set the brew time, Wait, oh, the Shut up. Press the auto program button and you will hear Tell me the time the brew cycle should auto-start. Oh, my God. 6.20 a.m. The coffee maker will then display and confirm your auto-start time, and you are set. Wow, that was easy. <laughs> there it is with the cover removed, and it's pretty much exactly what I expected. Just a single circuit board with the flyback transformer. There's the high voltage lead going to the CRT, which was made by a company called Sanjin. I never heard of them, but by the 2000s, these no-name Chinese companies were probably the only ones left still making these small black and white picture tubes. Down here, I see a reference to 12.6, which is probably the filament voltage of the CRT. And as for picture adjustments, which are not externally accessible, right here on the back is a focus control. There's another one here which you might have a chance of getting to, and that's for sub-brightness. And the only other one you could possibly get to without disassembling this thing further is this vertical adjustment. I don't know what kind of vertical adjustment it is, but there you can see it. There's another trimmer in there for horizontal hold, but that's directly underneath the CRT. So good luck trying to get to that when it's in use. But I don't see any need to adjust any of those controls, so I'm just going to leave them alone and put the cover back on. That's about as much of a miracle as you're going to see on this channel. A 9-inch black and white Super VGA computer monitor from 2002.